Welcome to episode number 54 of Life Without Cravings. I want to touch on the subject of abstainers versus moderators and the myths and misconceptions around these labels. These were terms that were mentioned by a writer and researcher called Gretchen Rubin. She wrote a book where she kind of introduced this concept of abstainers and moderators and that these are people with different traits. And so the idea is that moderators are people who cannot deny themselves something because when they deny themselves from having it, that will just result in them falling off the wagon in the future. And they will just probably go on a binge or just overeat or whatever. They do much better at having just a little bit of something and then they're satisfied and they can eat that in moderation and they do fine. They just, they get their fill and they don't have to feel as if they're missing out and life is good. I think most people who are watching this, probably not moderators, okay? Abstainers, on the other hand, they are the all or nothing people. As soon as they have a little bit, they want it more. And when abstainers try to moderate, they just, they, they become exhausted. That's when the chatter is coming up in the brain. They have these endless conversations in the brains, in the heads about, should I have it? How much should I have? Or if I should do it, do I have to not do it tomorrow? Or should I maybe stay away? And what happens if I'm not, you know, if I'm not having it? Or what happens if I do have it? Is it going to be enough? Or do I need to get something more? This endless conversation is just completely exhausting. So that's how she describes them. And she also said that if an abstainer decides that something is off limits, then the temptation is gone, right? And as someone who has been addicted to sugar, I know that making that decision and sticking with it would have been impossible for me. I could never have said, I'm just not going to eat sugar. Believe me, I tried it. It doesn't work for me, or it didn't work for me. But I am 100% not a moderator. I have never been able to moderate. So from my perspective, anyone who's addicted to carbs or addicted to something, they don't even fit into this model of abstainers and moderators. We have a problem that we cannot solve by being abstinent or by being a moderator. But addicts are always told that they need to abstain to be successful. Now. I have proven this to be wrong. And if you didn't see my interview a couple of weeks ago with Matt K, go and watch that interview because he's talking about the same thing with regards to other addictions. So it's not something that is just for food addiction. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter what you're addicted to. Everything works the same way. So here is a misconception that I want you to be aware of, that I want you to really think about when you are sitting there and feeling as if, well, if I'm not an abstainer and not a moderator, what the heck am I going to do? Am I just doomed? You're not. Saying that someone is an abstainer or a moderator, that's a very definite statement, which labels you as one or the other. But these are character traits. They are not absolute. We can change character traits. It's not as if, if you're a dog, you cannot become a cat. Although some woke dogs might actually argue with that. But in reality, dogs cannot become cats. They are dogs. However, character trait is not something permanent. I'm a moderator. I can become an abstainer or I'm an abstainer and I can become a moderator. You can learn to swap between those. And I want you to know this, that it's possible. There is work involved, but it's possible. So you might choose to be an abstainer because it may, might make your life easy. And I'm all good with that if you're good with that. Or you might choose to be a moderator because that makes your life easier. And if that's you, I'm happy for you. And I'm all good with that too. I don't have a problem with anyone choosing anything. You get to do whatever you want to do with your life for whatever reason you have. What I'm not good with is when you identify as being an abstainer, but you resent it because you don't want to be an abstainer, <laughs> but you believe that you have to be an abstainer, to be able to have a healthy relationship with food. That is a problem for you, if that is you. Now, I have so many of these kind of people coming to me for help because they believe that they need to abstain and they really don't want to do it. And obviously, you can hear it already, they, they're not going to succeed. Some of these people 
work with me and they learn how to become moderators of their fashion. Maybe not a moderator as you might think, having a little bit every day. I don't think that's healthy either. Why do you need that? But that's a discussion for another time. And some of them decide that they want to abstain, but not because they have to, but because that's what makes them feel their best. And they are now so focused on feeling great that there is no space for foods that don't serve them anymore. I think that is great. And this also goes hand in hand with what I was saying about me defining myself as being an abstainer. So the reason that I decided that I'm an abstainer type was that moderation has never worked for me. (laughs) Having one cookie would definitely have driven me crazy. I have tried it many times. I'm just going to have one. It's not possible because my brain is just like, no, there are more cookies. We need to eat more cookies, right? For me, in that moment, it would have been less painful to not have any cookies. So I thought, okay, I am an abstainer. But telling myself that I was never going to have cookies again and that I needed to stay away from the cookies because I'm an abstainer and that is how I need to uh, behave around food didn't work. Because if I seriously considered that this could become a reality, I'm really going to do it, I would panic. My brain would just like, "Ah, we're not going to do that. And if I wasn't seriously considering it, I would just fail because I knew that I I wasn't really committed. It wasn't going to happen anyway. We all know that, (laughs) Pim, that's not going to work. We we know what you're like. It's not going to work. So obviously it wasn't going to work. So I thought that what I was missing was willpower. And just to kind of push through my cravings and make it happen. And when I've done it for long enough, the cravings will go and it will be easy. Guess what? Willpower doesn't work. No matter what people tell you, willpower cannot overcome a sugar addiction or a carb addiction or any addiction. Just forget about it. It's never going to work. It might work short term. You might have success on one single day. But the pressure and the desire to consume That food is just going to build up over time and it is going to drive you crazy. So I have done the work to teach myself how to become a moderator. This doesn't mean that moderation is what comes to me naturally. It may be, maybe it never will. Just think about it as me becoming a ballet dancer. (laughs) Really good example, right? I could learn to do it. I could absolutely do it. But I would probably never be as graceful as Some people that have like the typical dancer body. I have never had this thin, nice, um, slender body that would just like look good and be really good at doing ballet dancing. I would always have to be a little bit mindful of, you know, what I'm doing. Am I actually, you know, what am I doing with my body? And thinking about my skills and doing everything properly. It wouldn't, probably wouldn't come to me as naturally, as easily as it does to some people. My body is more robust. I've always had like hips and shoulders and I'm more suited to lifting heavy weights, putting on muscle. That comes more naturally to me. I don't have to think about lifting weights. I'm a natural. I just do it correctly with good form because I have done it so much and it suits my body. But if my passion is ballet, I can still learn how to do that and I can still learn how to do that well. So just as I can moderate, I find it easier to abstain because then I don't have to manage my mind every time I eat something. But as long as I am prepared to do the work and manage my mind when I'm eating something, I can do it without risking falling off the wagon. It is not a problem. It's just the commitment to And the expectation of having to maybe do a little bit more work to make that work for me if I want to be a moderator. And as a matter of fact, I am doing it so well now that I rarely actually have something. But by definition, I'm not abstaining because I am not 100% staying away from all the carbs. I'm having some every now and then. I'm doing it so well and I'm so well practiced at doing that now. I I don't even have to put the extra work in. But if I wanted to do it more often, I think maybe I would have to because I think that by doing that, old pathways would open up in my brain and they would be like they're tempting me to go back to what I used to do. I just need to be prepared to do that work. And we don't have to see that as a defeat or deciding that we are a certain type of person and that that is never going to work or whatever. That's not what it means. It's just 
biochemistry. It's just a new or an old neural pathway in your brain that is like, ah, we recognize this. We've done this in the past. And what we do then is we give you cravings so that we can get more of it. Okay, we have to work through that. And then that might go away. And then that might be easier for you. But there, it, there will be more work involved. So it's up to me to choose whether I want to do that work or not. And for what reason? So what I want you to take with you today is that you can choose. You can be a moderator or you can be an abstainer. And it's not something that is permanent. You can go from one to the other and back again. You can always choose. So if you're not happy with the label that you have put on yourself, you can change it or at least change how you relate to food in whichever direction you want to go. And if you don't know where to start, I have a free course called Food Freedom Foundations, which you can sign up for. Um, There's a link in the description. You can just click that one and go and sign up for it. It's completely free. It will teach you some really helpful tools if you want to learn how to become a moderator or if you just want to learn how to manage your cravings so that you can abstain. It doesn't matter which one you want to be. You use the same tools because right now, if you're watching this, most likely you're someone who feels like, hang on. I have a problem with food, I overeat, I am addicted, whatever it is. And that is the first step. That's the foundation that you need to learn. So that was all I wanted to share with you this week. So I will see you again next week. Bye.